So there's always, you know, somebody in D.C. or elsewhere pushing green energy. But that's why we thought it was kind of strange that a new study came out from the EIA saying over the next 30 years, coal is not going anywhere. We're joined by Robert Bryce, senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. It's always good to see you. And basically coal um, growing faster than petroleum consumption until after uh, 2030. That's what we found out in this. And that kind of stood out to us. Uh, but I guess it's all about China, right? Well, it is, uh, Connell. It is about China. It's about India. Um, and interestingly enough, what we found out just earlier this year, it's about Europe. Germany is now building 11,000 megawatts of new coal-fired capacity. So despite what President Obama said last month about uh, the U.S. doing something about climate change, that we're going to protect this for future generations, uh, unless or until uh, we can find something that generates electricity at a, at a price point that's cheaper than coal, uh, coal is going to stick around for a very long time. Well, you hit a price point, which is always the discussion and energy that uh, maybe people don't want to have, and it's, you know, you're talking about morals, and you're talking about what we should do for the planet, and the conventional wisdom becomes like, you know, over 30, 40 years, oh, of course, we're going to be, quote, going green. But you look at price, you look at economics. If you're in the, if you just get, push that to the side for a second and think about it as an investor that wants to make money, you have to ignore those things sometimes, I guess. Connell, what's happening in the developing world is an explosion in demand for electricity. Uh, the essentiality of electricity to modernity is incontrovertible. And, and what do the countries in the developing world need? They need cheap, abundant, reliable electricity. So they're turning to coal. And what are we seeing in the, in the global electric market? We're adding effectively one Brazil's worth of new electricity demand every year, around 450 terawatt hours per year of new demand. And Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, China, India, you name it, these countries are, are burning coal to get there. Now, China and India are obviously so so big, a billion plus people in each country. We have these projections that come out in a report like this. Worldwide energy related carbon uh, dioxide emissions are supposed to go up by 46% by the year 2040. You say, all right. And then we yeah. talked about coal already, uh, projected increase there. Is there any chance, though, that between now and then, that we could see a dramatic change in policy in a China or in India where they say, wait a second, we have to change course? and uh, promote a different type of energy consumption within our country, and that could change the dynamics of all this. What's interesting, Connell, about the two countries that you mentioned, China and India, is that they're both pushing hard for nuclear. Um, but remember, the, the, the coal hmm. plants that they're building now uh, will are, will be in service for decades to come. The same is true in Germany. I, I'm very bullish on nat natural gas. I'm very bullish on nuclear. Right. Um, I'm hopeful that we can expand the nuclear fleet because nuclear, when it comes to baseload generation, is really going to be the key if it's going to displace any of the coal that's now uh, uh, coming online. And the other one we haven't had a chance to talk about, but we've talked about it plenty of times in the past, is shale on this show. So, um, again, I think a report like this is just don't jump to conclusions. Read what, what's actually in it. You might be surprised. Robert Price, good to see you as always. Thank you for coming on. Thanks a million, Connell.